Hello and welcome to An Artist's Dream, the show where we share artists' journeys and point of views to help you find your own path. I'm your host, Alex, and welcome to the show. So, two days ago I released an episode featuring an interview with Kerr from Umwelt. They are an artist who specializes in drawing marine life and they use their art to educate their audience on those animals that she draws as well as using it to support conservation efforts which I thought was just so so cool. So today this episode's going to be a Q&A with Umwelt. I asked you guys to submit your questions over on Instagram and Twitter and you guys provided plenty of questions for them to answer. If you'd like a chance to ask questions to our future guests, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you become a patron, I'll prioritize your questions when it comes time for our guests to answer them. And you'll also receive early access to all our future episodes. If you want information on all that, all the links will be down in the description box or in the uh, show notes. So definitely check that out. But without further ado, here is Umwelt answering some of your questions. So um, Madeline asked, um, would you consider making more items like the sea turtle stickers that donate to causes? Oh, absolutely. So um, I'm constantly working on new ways to come up with more conservation projects. Uh, the, the donation to cows are definitely one way. Um, raising awareness through pins is something that I always wanted to do too. Uh, like I said, right now, it's just a combination of lack of time and, and all the work that I have to do that's really putting me back. Um, but I, I definitely do want to plan on doing sort of like a monthly thing where every month I feature, you know, a different project that I can donate profits to. That way I'm always having something new that goes on monthly. And Bean asks, what is something you wish you had done sooner for your business and your career? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, man, this is hard. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> so <laughs> I think for me, um, I wish I found a, a community to grow with sooner. I think that's the most important part that people don't talk about is like, um, you're, like we talked about, we mentioned this multiple times throughout the the pod, this podcast episode that your audience on social media is catered to you and to you only, right? So growing mm-hmm. that audience and having an audience that's in that you know is invested in you, that cares about you, that enjoys the work you do and supports you because they like you as a person, not just for your art. I think that's like that's the one thing that I wish that I developed sooner because I think having that audience especially the people on patreon um like i have a patreon discord and and every day i get messages from my supporters who are like you know we love your stuff and um you know whenever i talk about more personal issues such as you know hey i i I can't ship out orders this week because you know i'm feeling overwhelmed from all this stuff if you have any questions you know please let me know if you want me to expedite your order, I can do it. And all of them will just be like, you know what? Like, why are you stressing out over this? Like, <laughs> take your time. We know as a small business, it's hard for you to do that stuff. And just having supporters who think like that, I think really makes it easier to do this job in the long run. Um, because, you know, I started a business where I didn't really, when I started my business, I didn't, re- I had an audience, but they weren't really like, I had an audience, but not a community. Does that make sense? Like, yes, I, it does. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I was putting out my stuff, I was kind of putting out my stuff to a bunch of people that I didn't really know. Like, you know, it was this constant unease of like, do they like me? Do they like my work? A- am I like doing good enough for them? And I'm putting all these expectations on myself. And then gradually, as I got a community together, I had people who. who these are people that like, I don't know, but you know, they've spent money with me. They've bought, bought from every single one of my shop updates. And they're like, dude, like you're totally fine. Like the, the work that you do is worth it. And I'm more than happy to support you. And having that community just back me up during times where I feel unsure about myself has really helped me progress forward. Um, and I think the best part about this is it doesn't cost anything to grow your own community. You know, it doesn't cost anything for you to uh, make a, a, 
separate Discord channel for your own stuff and Mm -hmm. then grow a community from there. So I think that's one of the best resources for me was was getting a community that would would nurture and help me grow as a person. Not only yeah, not just as a business, but just as a person in general. Um and so I really would encourage anybody, like, you know, before you jump into the the sweaty biz business aspect, you know, dealing with money, dealing with profit, dealing with drawing and and working 70 to 90 hours a week for a job that you just really like, you know, definitely, you know, get into growing your own community because that's free. And then when you have that solid community, it'll be so much easier for you to start your own business and, and know that there will be people, uh, people supporting you right, right off the bat. I, I, Totally, totally agree. Um, I mean, I think listeners will totally uh, be able to immediately when you talk about that, think about an artist that they do that for. For me, I feel like some of the artists are people like Catnip and Lee Ellickson. You know, they're people that I, I almost feel like they're friends and I know them mainly because they put themselves out there. And when that happens, you see them as a brand and a person that you like so much that you want to help them succeed however you can. And I think that is probably the way to go if you want to start your own business in art. You know, it's not just about art. It's about you and making people care not only about your art, but caring about you as a person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Putrid Petal asked, how did you uh, develop your brand's visual identity? Um in terms of visual identity, like, like I mentioned, like I've always loved marine biology. So it was really easy for me to develop my brand right off the bat because I knew it was something that I wanted to put a focus in. Um, that being said, in terms of advice, um, that's really difficult to say because not all, not all brands, like I know Rachel focuses on frogs and I focus on the ocean, but not every brand has that kind of very straight off, one set theme Mm -hmm. um I think you know you should be this is art you know you're not confined to the spaces of of a a border that you need to work within like I definitely encourage you to um you know look for what you like and draw what you want and then from there on like I think it's better for you to draw what you want right off the bat and draw the stuff that you enjoy and build an audience right off the bat even if it's slower to build than comparing to like jumping into something that everybody likes right away Mm -hmm. um and growing an audience based off of something that you feel like you know if you have to draw for your audience and not for yourself you're gonna burn out big time but, you know, if you're building an audience based off of stuff that you're already doing for yourself, that's going to be, you know, way more sustaining, not just for your business, but just, you know, for you in the long run and your mental health. For sure. And also, uh, that's uh, kind of like what you said, when you're drawing what you like, there are inevitably going to be themes that repeat. Yeah. And that's kind of how a lot of people's visual identities uh, f- get formed. It's through the repetition and themes and visual choices, which will inevitably happen when you're the artist. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And here's a question that I bet you get like 17,000 times every single day. <laughs> but what does Umwelt mean? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, um the word umwelt is a variant spelling that derives from the word umwelt, which is uh, which means self-centered world in German. Ger- yes, German. I almost said Germany. <laughs> um, <laughs> the concept of the word was coined by a famous German biologist uh, who studied animal behavior. And we learned this concept in my zoology class back when I was in uh, university. Uh, the concept refers to theories that each living organism experiences the world that lives differently, uh, based on their different needs and different priorities. So uh, umvel is very much, I think, a noun. So your umvel is different than what my umvel is because we have different priorities. We have different needs that we want to sustain. Um, and that goes for any sort of living organism, whether it's an, an animal, whether it's your friend or your family. Um, understanding someone else's umvel, putting forth that... Um, empathy and and the effort to try to understand them and why they 
they may act the way they do or why they may present the way they do uh, is really important into just understanding everybody, you know. Um, so for, for me, in, in terms of biology, we learned this concept because um, you cannot understand an animal that you're trying to research by viewing it from the lens of a human because that is your own bias in your umwelt that is impeding what you get to see uh, from that animal's perspective. So uh, we commonly talked about in, in zoology, for example, animals that we consider intelligent, we've considered them intelligent based off of um, actions that they do that reflect what humans can do, right? That, that reflects on our own umwelt. For example, um, dolphins are... are um, considered intelligent because they have the same social structures and fam familial structures just like humans do, or dogs can listen to human commands. Um, parrots can mimic human words, et cetera, et cetera. And none of us really consider like an animal can be intelligent and, and um, incredible in its own way without being compared to uh, our own personal human biases. So that's what I, I, that's what Umwelt means. And that's what, I tried to base my business around was just trying to get people to understand that there was so much more than what your own world, your own biases from your own world might cover your eyes from seeing. Um, and, and that's basically it. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, and so relevant, not only to, you know, the theme of your brand, which is, you know, like, uh, like marine animals, but also it's, so relevant to artists right because I feel like a lot of times artists limit themselves by their own world view and what what they know and right. I think that's why a lot of artists kind of quit before they've even started because they think from you know quote-unquote evidence in their lives that you know they they're not successful in art now why would they ever be but it really is about looking beyond that and actually seeing the potential that's there that is not supported, I guess, by your limited worldview, but could be if you expanded it. Yeah. And last question. Uh, somebody asked, uh, how many people help you in your business? So my business right now, I know, like, I, I know... This is not just for me. This goes for a lot of uh, independent, small business running artists that are um, that may look like they have large followings. A lot of this do. A lot of our businesses are just run by one person, and that's usually like the artist in question. So, um, like, I do all my website maintenance. Um, I've done it for a long time. I fulfill my own orders. You know, I buy my own supplies. I answer my own emails. I have to like contact my own manufacturers and stuff like that. Like that's all done by one person. And if you mm -hmm. consider this, like, especially on a larger scale, for example, like if you think about it, um, if you're comparing Umwelt to a company like Walmart, for example, right? Walmart has their own customer service faction. They have their own people talking to manufacturers. They probably have their own graphic designers, their own, um, you know, they, they got like, they're hiring multiple people to do all the jobs that one person would have to do in a small business. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want people to keep that in mind when you're supporting small artists that, um, you know, like we're, we're not, comp you know, we're not, corporations who can ship out your orders in two days uh during the time that we're trying to pack orders we're also trying to juggle emails and we're also trying to market our stuff on social media and we're also talking to people who are manufacturing our stuff for us and so we're doing a hundred million and one things at once and sometimes it catches up to us and it, it gets pretty hard to manage all of that within the course of a day um and like i said i think this goes back into like Personally, for me, I work 70 to 90 hours a week compared wow. to, yeah, co right, compared to like your, a full-time job at a, at a corporate, um, like nine to five, for example. Mm -hmm. But I'm not complaining because, you know, I do this ultimately because I, I enjoy what I do. Not all aspects of it because <laughs> of not, every, not every job is perfect, you know, but like, I don't, like, I in particular don't really like um, dealing with the customer service aspect of it, especially when I have to deal with rude customers. 
but it's a part of the job and, and it's something that I have to do until I'm, you know, potentially larger enough to have somebody take that over in the future. So yeah, to answer your question, just what, just one person, it's just me. Sometimes <laughs> I get help from like, if I can ask my mom after she comes back from work, I'm like, can you help me pack stuff? And she'll like pack some more stuff for me. Um, but otherwise outside of that, it's just me. Yeah. And, um, I especially like that towards the end, like you said, um, it's not forever, you know, the, there will be a point in your, uh, in your business where you can, you know, outsource some of your stuff. And it's just a point of, you know, knowing that, you know, you're building towards that. And, uh, um, and also it's not a bad set of skills to have. I know a lot of people are like, uh, I hate, doing things like my taxes or, uh, you know, I hate the customer service aspect. Some people hate the fulfillment part, but it's still nice to have those uh, skills under your belt because building a business just gives you so many skills that you can use in the future for endeavors that you don't even know you're going to pursue. Right. And keep in like, keep in mind too, that like, it's a job. Not every aspect of your job mm-hmm. is supposed to be fun. But I think the the important part is you pick and choose your own battles here. Like, if you're going to pick a job that you want to enjoy, you might as well pick something that in the long run you will enjoy, even if it has some inconvenience, in, inconveniences or some aspect of it you don't like. Like, you pick and choose what you you have to come across because you're always going to come up with problems. Inevitably, you will always come up with some sort of hardship along the road. But if you're going to come across them anyways, you might as well get to pick them. You get what I mean? A hundred percent. Totally love that like point of view about it. So where can people find you and your work? Yeah. So I'm here. uh, You can contact me through my website, website at umvelt.fish. I'm also on Instagram and uh, at Umvelt with an underscore after, and then at Twitter at MG3KIRYU. Um, and I think that's it. But if you can't find those places, just don't worry. It's all on my website, so you could probably just find me through there. I really enjoyed this interview with Umvelt. It's always so interesting uh, how I have the opportunity to talk to so many different business owners and just learn about how everybody treats their businesses. You know, they all have things that they have in common, but they also all have their own set of unique challenges. As always, um, for more information about Umvelt today, all those links are going to be down in the description box or in the show notes. And as mentioned earlier in the episode, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, And all that will be down in the description box and the show notes as well. And so that you don't miss any future episodes, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to me right now. I'm on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and I'm sure many, many other apps as well. (laughs) So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. But until the next episode, this is Alex saying goodbye for now. And hopefully I will see you again real, real soon. Bye.